Um, welcome to my little presentation regarding improving user experience in HTML forms. I'm Joel. I'm a software developer of a bunch of years. I'm from Sweden. I usually travel. This year I've been traveling more than I've been coding. Uh, so my coding skills are actually quite rusty. I should add that the code I'm presenting today is, I guess, mostly from 2011 and 2012, when I was working for the Swedish government, respectively, as sorry, and the city of Toronto, respectively, living in Sweden and Toronto, now in Berlin. There. Oh, yeah. I have, like, notes with this somewhere, but... So I, um, while I was preparing this presentation, um, I ended up patching the presentation software a whole lot more than actually writing the presentation. It's a lot of fun, as I said, I'll talk about later. Yes. So I added this picture because I wanted to remind you guys, ask questions. Does anyone have a, does anyone have a question? <laughs> Is that the cat? <laughs> um, unfortunately not. <laughs> um, I wish it was. It's called Happy Cat, according to to annoy your meme. I figured it would be like a nice pretty picture to, to have here. Um, any other questions while we're at it? Is there any presentation? There is a presentation. <laughs> oh shit, I need to start my timer, thank you very much. What time you also, I need to not touch. <laughs> There. I can talk a lot about a lot of things, so I figure a timer would be good. There. Um, improve what in user experience? Very relative thing. Um, to me, usability, some of the confusion complexity stuff that ordinary users, I'm not thinking about us power users, obviously. And by adding some logical input ordering and such, hiding fields until they're needed, why not? You know, like everything is not on screen at the same time, optimal. Um, and smaller things like overriding dependent behavior in browser or browser dependent behavior um, is not good for the users always. It's actually good for support people. Like, why is this ever happening? Like, we overrode it because support didn't want to see that be different in different browsers. Other things that it's not so use common to think about in user experience, I think, is input speed. Um, but I've been working in, in input speed the places where input speed is quite important. A normal web page, you think, like reduce the number of fields to, to reduce the number of steps for someone to purchase or register, right? But I'm talking places where you have a lot of, a lot of fields and people are sitting in these field forms eight hours per day. Um, should totally have included that XKCD about how many minutes or days you save, saving one second per, um, per blah, blah, blah task. But these input speed things, they're a little bit trickier, I think, yeah, because you need existing data or existing rules or you need to talk to your users. And you can't really skip low frequency fields unless you talk to your users because they're going to get super And um, I'll show you a little bit later what I mean by that. Um, as well, automatic formatting might not go well with everyone unless you talk to people. But one of the first things to do is to um, embrace HTML5's own um, form validation. You guys used it so far? Hands up. What, three of us in here have used HTML5 form validation? Seriously? Okay. I can talk slower. <coughs> yeah. Don't worry. And do you guys recognize the first part here, um, except for the last line, like pretty much the last line since data uh, H5 error ID? Like the required part, 
part of the HTML5 specification as to mark a field as required. So the browser knows that you have to input something in this field in order to advance in the form. Placeholder, um, yeah, just to put something pretty in the box so people know what to enter. Pattern, regex pattern to match against. Um, title is the usual one, but it's now used with form validation. If you fail form validation, these titles will be shown to the user. These are built-in things in HTML5. They've been around since at least 2009 by now, right? And most browsers totally work fine with them. Except old IE and current Safari for some reason. Um, I'll show you exactly what happened in current Safari. Um, But because these things don't always work so great across all browsers, you can use a little bit of scripting to fix browsers. So you shim these browsers with, for example, H5 validate. And these things will work better. I'll show you one example here. My So I actually prepared all of the code, so I don't, I don't have to type the code. Would you rather see me type the code um, than this? Like, because this is what I would kind of type. And the most important thing here is the form each five validate thing at the bottom there. But I'll leave that stuff. There. Click here. Demo step one. Um, I'm reloading this, and I expect to see um, just a standard administration form. This is the kind of form I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about form that needs speed improvement. I did not make this pretty, but I didn't try to make it pretty, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'm thinking about the kind where people are sitting all day long and staring into this boring as hell form. Mm. <laughs> filling it out. They're taking call after call, filling this out. And it's just not great. This is um, the reality for a lot of people. Has anyone in here worked with this kind of system like day, day in, day out? No one. One, so two, sorry. three, maybe. Um, I'm happy to hear that you might recognize sort of this um, boring ass job. I've been working, in working, filling out order forms from paper to to computer input, which is why I built some of these scripts. In subsequent jobs, I must say. Um, so I'm gonna make a loss of all the time here. This is. Uh, step seven. I'm actually going to work backwards because I worked. I built a full, uh, full thing, and then I removed things step by step. So step seven is the one I removed the most from. This is a basic um, semi-formalidated thing. If I en enter things here, there's no error message. This is HTML5 validation. Um, Uh, yeah, that's true, this is Chrome. Um, here. So this is an error for phone numbers. Um, it's hard to read even though I zoomed in, right? But it says like, um, customer's phone number is required. And in a phone order kind of system, that might make sense. Um, but as you can see here, in Chrome, I'm pressing enter, thank you, and it doesn't submit the form. And this is kind of important because it's failed validation. Like, it'll uh, fail in a couple of couple of different places here, like name should be, okay, focus is the first one. Name should be required, for example. Um, so if I fill in a phone number here, it jumps to name, and this is part of the 
the standard, but the browser behavior is not standard. Unfull screen this. So this is the same page here, and the same HTML5 validation is here. This is the latest version of Safari on Maverick, so it's not like it's last year's version or anything. If I press enter here, it will submit the form. The submitting of the form in this case leaves a blank page, so it means nothing. Um, if latest Safari doesn't have these HTML5 standards implemented, then it's time to do a bit of scripting. So this is step number six. Uh, sorry, seven. Let's see step number six. Added H H5 validate. I hit enter, and with a little bit of scripting, it validates all of the fields at the same time instead of just one at a time. It also highlights the ones, of course, that are erroneous and displays this title that I mentioned earlier as a separate element. A lot better user feedback, a lot clearer. Um, does it seem better than having to see validation for either a single control at a time or having no validation at all in Safari, for example? Well, I'd say so. Um, you guys ever use anything like H5 validate, like a shim like this? Which one? Oh, I can't remember its name. Uh, it was a jQuery plugin. Mm -hmm. Some kind, yeah. yeah, this is a jQuery plugin as well. I mean, yeah. jQuery. Um, it is pretty good. But I must say that um, I, my fork has a lot of improvements, of course, random improvements, that I prefer over the original maintainer's um, version. So. I urge you to look at it, but I would actually go for something else than H5 validate today, unless it's my own version. So this is a simple example. H5 validates adds this readiness, of course, configurable in CSS to the form and gives warnings. Let's see. Um, here's one thing. Um, that is not actually anything the user ever sees. This is a developer library tool. I'm just going to mention it because I'm, I'm using it in the next two um, plugins I'm going to show you. I wrote this uh, 2011, broke it out in part from two other things. It's quite useful. Um, anybody ever wanted to emulate a tab in a browser? Like tabbing? Sure. It happens. Um, I would recommend this little <laughs> plugin, of course. I mean, it doesn't do very much. It's actually like a two-line operation, unless you're taking account like Firefox. Firefox, I think, like 10 had some bugs regarding focusing uh, file inputs, which would mean that you'd end up in nowhere land because inside of file input, you're in a sandbox mode, and that kind of broke everything in terms of Emulated tabbing. First tool built with this is Skip on Tab, um, which is not the same as tab index equals minus one, which I'm pretty sure you guys have used at some point. Do you recognize that? Do you actively use tab index equals minus one currently? Anyone? Anyone uses tab indexes at all? Nices at all? Are they useful? It's the Lexi implementation. Sorry, it's it's the Lexi implementation that you want to change. <laughs> um, well, if you're stuck with it, that's one thing. But I've tried to maintain one site 
uh, using tab index once. I was like, I'm going to optimize tab order. Um, the problem is every link on the page is, uh, is focusable. So you need to, in order for someone to tab to the form elements, you start with the form elements and you set tab indexes on those. Um, and then if you start doing that for form elements, then it will push all the links to the end of it. So all the, the people who need usability will not like ever be able to reach the links and blah, 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 blah. It's just a whole mess, actually. Um, but what I really wanted to do was to skip, um, what I usually want to do is to skip a field with tab index equals one, and minus one. Um, so you can't tab to it. But it turns out that you cannot reach it by any other means than clicking the mouse. And if you are doing this input daily and hour in, hour after hour, that actually turns into a problem that you need to reach for the mouse in, let's say, 10% of the cases because you only need to skip a field from 10% of the cases. Um, I'll show you with an example because I feel that I might be talking. Let's go step by step. Looking at a random form like this, um, if you're using it all day every day, you might not use, you might not care about every field every time. Check this one out. Address line to optional. It would be faster if you didn't really have to tab through that one every time. I mean, I'm using this as a very small example. Um, here, if you tap through, skip this one every time, uh, which means 90% of the cases, like if you skip it 90% of the cases, it will save time. Um, when it comes to larger things that are usually default, like good by default, like delivery options, um, you'll have a couple more tabs to save. And on a longer form, you will have 20 tabs to save. It doesn't sound like a lot, but seriously, it, it increases user appreciation of a system if you're able to, to talk to them and choose which fields are not important. <clears throat> yes? Are you sure about that skipping the tab, that uh, pressing one more tab 90 times is more expensive than moving the mouse 10 times and clicking? Um, haven't done any of the, the timing studies, but I'm talking to the users and they appreciate it. Um, I mean, as, a, as an end product, if you talk to the users and you ask them if they would like it, and they would like it, that's the way. Um, the system that me and a couple of other developers implemented this the first time for is for eight full-time employees uh, who take letters that have been sent to the wrong address in Sweden. I mean, all the letters in Sweden are sent to the wrong address and not in their hands. They have to open them up, they have to parse the address first from the outside of the envelope, then parse all the content in it and input this into a computer system searchable. So imagine you're, you're opening letters all day long and you enter addresses. And you have this, like, I mean, the biggest part of their job is to enter addresses. So skipping the second address line to them was a huge win. I mean, like, I'm talking in, in like, small cases here, but, like, for the second address line, for eight people, all day, every day, year round, they were happy. <laughs> Surprisingly happy. Um, because this was improvement over the old, old system. Old system have the same fields. We just skipped a bunch of them. Um, of course, this is. Yeah, again, it sounds minor. Um, but the, the thing that makes a difference with skip on tab compared to the um, tab index equal to minus one is this. See, I tabbed past it from here. One tab, and it just skips that optional field. It said you can do shift tab and go to it, which you cannot do with the HTML5 version 
uh, sorry, the HTML tab index equals minus one. It actually just removes it from the tab order. There's no way to reach it without clicking. And uh, so the shift tab thing is the ooh, so big improvement using this library over using standard HTML features. Um, again, not big, but if you have these people entering the addresses, they actually appreciate being able to go to that address line to the shift tab. Minor things. Um, in, the, in the bigger scheme of things, let's say here, um, I have a state province, I said for Ontario because that's where I was living. Um, I have the delivery options, gift wrap and delivery like speed basically, cost for that. And you have the order notes down there. If you want to go to the order notes, instead of one, two, three tabs, um, well actually four tabs, you can do one tab. Um, if you if you know you're hardly ever going to say let's like, change the state and province, you're never going to change the gift wrap or the normal delivery or hardly ever. I mean, skipping too long is is not great because here's the counter example. If I shift tab here uh, to say change the state province, instead of shift tabbing once, I have to tab through the delivery and gift wrap options. Um, so a lot of like ordering issues in this if you're planning a real a real system. Does anybody think that skip on tab might be useful in some cases? Definitely. Mm -hmm. But you have to have like eight people, twenty four seven. I was going to say like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a business process thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you talk to the users and they like it, I would say it's a win. I don't care so much about the milliseconds in many of the cases. Um, the people we're talking, I'm talking about the people who are actually doing the letter thing. They're, they are on average something like 55, 60 year old women working in the north of Sweden. All of their husbands are working in, a, in, a, in an iron mine. And all of them have ended up in office jobs. I know like their husbands have a shit job, you know, like they will like ruin their muscles and backs and whatever. But these women were equally worried about ruining their shoulders with extra tabbing. Seriously. <laughs> um, it sounds a little bit weird, but we listened to them. We did it. And we got paid. So, right? Um, that's one example. So, skip on tab. Good for something. Oh, so, sorry, yeah, implementation details here. You can put it on like a single input or you can put it on containers. For example, check boxes. You can have a hundred check boxes and you always want to skip them. That's like the bigger, I don't want to skip through, I don't want to tab through a hundred check boxes. Even though I want to use the tab instead of the mouse. Yeah. Okay, so I told you guys about the wonderfulness about the latest dev version of Chrome. Um, <laughs> this happened a few days ago. This is a CSS3 transform. I've seen a similar bug on another website. I cannot think of anything else than the dev version of Chrome doing this for some reason. Um, but it's okay. I think I have it prepared. Yes. Good job. <laughs> Okay, so I told you guys before it's going to be like a problem, so I hope you understand. Ah, uh, okay. Yay! Uh, actually, there. Ergonomical workstations. Also important for wives of iron mine workers, of course. You've seen this picture before. It's like the most basic picture of the resonance. Have you seen this version where you see any something from above? I've never seen this one. I've never thought about it really that much until I was implementing the system. Um, a stack of papers on the left hand side, a pencil. Um, I don't know if it's a left-handed or right-handed person because the pen is on the left-hand side, but that means that the right-handed person is going to lean to the left side to right. And there's a phone on the left-hand side, there's a couple of books, and there's a red swing line safety that's not red. 
Rather spring line staples? Staplers? No one? Okay, we got a couple more. <laughs> Good. Um, there's one problem here, and the title is pluses tab. The one problem I see, um, and I've experienced myself being a data entry person for a couple months, is that the tab key is on the left hand side where you should hold a piece of paper, reading off of it a little bit. I mean, like, you can hold a document holder, but if you're doing as these ladies do, they open, like, envelopes, and they have, like, three pieces of paper, and they just shuffle all of them, or whatever, you don't have a document holder, and it doesn't work. And the tab key is on the far left-hand side, and the kind of entry I did at least, and I know that several companies I've worked with do, is largely number-oriented. NumPad. I know I'm in a laptop, I, don't, I haven't had a NumPad in years, but data entry staff, they have NumPads, especially if they work with digits. There's some interesting symmetry I was going to say here, but it's not really symmetry. The plus key on the right hand side, you can also choose the minus key, um, is on pretty much the opposite side uh, of the tab key. So if you're working on the digits, there to the right for fast data entry, and you can't use enter always because that's a, sometimes a problem in web pages. Um, you can use a plus key with a little bit of scripting. You don't have to reach over to the left hand side or put down like put down the thing you're reading, tab, pick it up again or whatever. Small optimizations again, but this one I'm very happy with myself. <coughs> if you have a fast if you know your, your thing, you know your numbers, you will make good use of this in putting numbers. And this is also used in the end of the day tab. Um, it's also configurable in such a way that you can set entry keys or arrow down or apart from non tab plus as tab keys. Um, kind of useful to me at least, because I'm working in data entry. Would you see this as useful as well? I mean, like, keyboard distance is not very long, but could be potentially useful, right? I hope so. Let's see, just a simple example of that. So again, the same form. Um, here, we have products. I've chosen to skip these products in this demo, like, if they're not important, because usually people calling in here uh, to TV shop, they're always ordering the basic product with product insurance. Um, and you know the basic product is TV shop, what do the seller sell on here on TV? Like, jewelry. Sorry? Jewelry? Cleaning stuff, no? Yeah, please, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but like those things. People call and order those things all the time. And they usually sell like I mean like they have more than one product. But they probably have the one product they sell all the time this week. And mm, thanks. Ten minutes left. I'm just such a soul star. Scared. That's what it looked like. Uh, and so if someone's working with entering numbers here all day long, um, if someone adds an, an extra product, in my, my case, I'm gonna use enter because I mapped it instead of tabbing. Um, it might lead to a win for some. It's a minor thing again. But numbers, enter. Um, well, enter again, actually instead of tab, tab, space, or something, because enter would be submitting the form in most cases. Um, and if you accidentally hit enter here, instead of here, then you'd submit the form, or you'd end up somewhere else warping around, because the form is not done yet. Um, mm, I mean, like, I prefer the plus key on none pad, but whatever, this works as well. Okay. do. Um, I'm going to show you this here. Um, here's actually one thing that I can skip a lot of the time. 
This is for the next piece of advice. Um, the delivery address is the same as the invoice address. That's usually the case for pretty much anyone who lives at home or small business. They don't have a separate invoicing address. So basically, this part here, um, this entire block of text should have the same values as up here. Or, I mean, that's a programmer way of doing it, I'd say, is to copy the values from one part of the form to the other. Um, in terms of user experience instead, I would rather not have these fields at all. Well, let's see here. Um, follow up. This is a simple way of adding follow up questions or lots of follow up questions. Like for this question. <laughs> It's not really relevant to show a text area, and text areas are pretty big usually, for someone who's never seen a UFO, or never encountered as you say, right? Close encounter here. Um, and let's say that only 5% of us are wackos, and actually have had close encounters with UFOs. Um, that only 5% would ever use like this text area box. And it doesn't make sense for it to take a lot of space. Um, why not hide it? Why not hide the second part of the address, like the delivery address versus the invoicing address? Um, minor things? 10 minutes. <laughs> minor things, if you look at it like as a small example, of course. But if 95% of us are sane. Yeah, let's see, which, um, step four, is that right? So that's right, actually, that's right here. Um, here, so you saw in step four, I did not apply the follow-up thing. I mean, I've now added data has follow-ups and data has follow-up sibling, and this is a follow-up question or block of follow-up questions to this to this yes/no question. Um, is it the same address? Yes. Then, like, skip it. Like, there's no use in in showing all these things. If it's not the same, show them. And then tabbing here is done as per usual. Um, I mean, we're talking small speed improvements again. This is a rather big one if you have a lot of follow-up questions. And it's pretty useful. I mean, like for UFO questions with only one text box, it's pretty big. Or for for these type of box, uh, type of follow-up questions where it's a matter of a bunch of inputs. <laughs> and these could extend to anything, like is the customer, does the customer want to customize a product, whatever. They're calling in for that, that, um, that TV shop deal and they want the product in red. Or they want the product in red and blue and whatever, right? And you have a bunch of checkboxes. You can actually hide them unless the customer wants customization. Small things. Um, auto clean callback. Automatic cleaning. Um, have you guys used any jQuery plugins for this before? Like tidying up input fields automatically? Me too, but like the ones where you see like a little like a underscore where you're supposed to enter something, right? I didn't really like those um, so much. They have their they have their wins, but I prefer this version instead. It doesn't show anything. This is um, it doesn't put like underscores in my text box. That's what I see. It just helps with cleaning up a little things. Like for example, this is a regular for a North American phone number. And I want it to look like this all the time. 
And it just cleans it up real quick. One. This phone number, for example, let's see. Those are my some of my old phone numbers, but let's just type one in. It's always ten digits. Go. Um as a data entry person, I don't want to sit there and do like parenthesis, number, 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 space, number, 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 dash, number, 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 um, whatever, because it's company policy to format it like that. And I also don't want to wait with formatting until like I'm done with the rest of the form. I want it to have it right away. Um, so I just I created this small plugin to format basically on key down or on copy paste. Um, there. There. It's fast enough to be unnoticeable and it saves a lot of small things. It's one of the things that the ladies up in the north of Sweden, again, the user case, were talking a lot about because they have problems. They had actual internal political problems in their groups. Because some people would enter, okay, I'm going to contrive this example to something down here. Some people would enter, enter their information with, um, not parenthesis first, but dash in between here. And others don't, didn't like that. It's such a small thing. Who the hell cares? Really? But it meant something to them because they didn't have anything else to find out. I don't know. Um, but like that was like we actually saved them a lot of trouble, a lot of interpersonal problems by applying automatic formatting to some of these simple fields. I mean, I'll take another simple example that's not applicable for the Swedish ladies, but here. In a Canadian zip code, you have letter, number, letter, number, letter, blah, 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 blah. And if you enter these things in lowercase because it's faster, then some people are going to get pissed off because it's not correct. So you automatically uppercase it as soon as the input things, right? And that saves problems in an organization. I never would have thought of like the political things about implementing like an auto feeding. But damn it! Um, I mean, they can't like they can't really complain anymore because it happens automatically. This is a valid Canadian. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 type that on. Um, there. Oh, it's a uh, Montreal um, code, if I remember correctly, but I don't know. Um, I mean, uppercase and a space in between groups there. Simple as that. But if you lowercase it and you don't have a space, someone's going to be unhappy. Small things. And of course, this uh, I built a couple of things here as like print, lowercase, uppercase, normalized, white space, numbers only, blah, blah, blah. And also some other Canadian specific things. I actually have a plugin that I just dropped into this form that auto cleans everything Canadian style, if you already marked it up Canadian style and HTML. So the script, I mean, just does nothing in particular, I was going to say, but it does everything automatically. Um, I saved this one for last because this one is really annoying if you have it in demo song, in like demo mode or test mode. <clears throat> what happens if a user accidentally presses um, the back button? Because you know one of those fancy mouses with the back button, or like the keyboard with the back button, or, or like the swipey thing here, and whatever, and they lose input data. Sure, usually doesn't matter, but like if you're building a system where you want people to register, it kind of matters. If you're building a system where people use it every day, it matters a lot. Um, simple plugin. Drop this into a web page. One or a few. Of one form preferably, I mean not many because this will interfere, like you'll change in one form and you've got warnings from, from another form. But this does exactly one thing. Not 
here. Um, I make a change here, and I try to leave the page. I make a change here, <laughs> two, and I try to leave the page. There, magic. So I don't forget to save. Smallest thing ever. I'm sure you guys have not remember this manually before. I just figured. Why not make it into an automated script that does it with no questions? You just load the script and it's done. Of course, you can customize the text for it if you want to. You can also, customize it to have this and have an Ajax backend, and you need to modify your submits a little bit. But apart from that, all done. Why didn't it work with the number? Uh, the first time? Um, unclear, actually. It should have worked if you asked me. <laughs> I would not have tried to do that and make myself look silly the first time. <laughs> ah, it happens. It's a demo. So, um, those are the things I had have a demo for. Are we good on time or should we just. Uh, yes. Oh, time looks good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just. Uh, I'll just sound of my Nyanyan cat. Ah, oh, my cat, alright. <laughs> um, questions on that stuff I've had so far? It's all been demoed and nice, all the demos are online already. I think we all can understand why the ladies want that formatting and like we want tabs and, and not spaces, etc. And two of them for you know code. Yeah. Um, but yeah. What, what did it how did it end up like? So what, then one party had won by default because you changed the system, so the other stated you for a week. Yep. Okay. Well, um, they won as in... Okay, we, we never heard of anyone losing, obviously, as developers. As developers, we had a product manager, uh, sorry, we had a project manager to take care of us developers, and he was talking to the product manager to take care of the users. So like we were a couple of steps away from the actual politics of this, but we were visiting them and we saw some of these small things. That they were in the same room, like I mean, a little bit bigger than this, but eight people all day long just shuttling letters. Um, someone won, someone won, someone lost. But as a team, with a little bit of consensus there, they all gained, let's say. Yeah. Questions? Do you have this online somewhere, or you can yeah. access it? Yeah, no, it's already linked on the meetup page in one of the comments. Um, I could have run this online. It's all there. Pretty, I mean, the, the changes I would have made in code writing this are pretty minor. They're actually like, apart from the fact that loading the script from the correct URL, um, the things you saw on the slides were like three or four changes tops per plugin. That's all you need per plugin. Then again, it gets repetitive. If you have a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is user experience. Yeah. Well, this was not CSS3. <laughs> um, so I could mention a few more things, like auto-completion in text areas. Um, doing auto completion on the fourth line in the text area where you might have a zip code or the third line, you don't know. Like it's usually a third or the fourth line. Uh, build a tool for that to find out some of the simple indexes as our differences. This is not a diffing tool, this is a tool to find out where a keystroke went. That's not a real diffing tool. I'm using it to auto complete in text fields, uh, sorry, text areas. Um, check what number the diff is on. Find out if it's the, the line we want to be auto-completing on, and run a procedure for auto-completion on the third or fourth line or the first line or whatever. Useful, but it's actually it's like my own demo code for this doesn't work. So <laughs> the actual implemented code actually did really work well for the again. This happens to be for the ladies up in the north. 
and they did they got audit completion of a database full of millions of addresses. And they got millions of addresses and they put them in a single text block. And they got like the statistically relevant for the past year, for the past two years, correct addresses based on the first three keystrokes to start with, if there's a match. Um, I mean like the database of addresses was big enough for us to use uh, solar for indexing addresses. Like that level of input they've done. And auto completing addresses in a in a in a in a free text field is a huge win for users. I don't I mean splitting up an address into um, name and then street and then blah 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 has this win for the data kind of guy. And I'm like, I'm an engineer, I'd rather have them in separate fields. But for inputters, it doesn't. There's no win in having them in separate fields usually. They would they're just as fine with a simple single text area. Um, this one is tricky to use, but whatever, you can. It's also where the presentation kind of breaks sometimes. This is for when other people don't write their code properly. This is a developer tool. If you happen to have a jQuery plugin that you would like to, that doesn't do change things properly, see that a little bit, you can do change poly instead. Just whatever simple plugin for this. Yep. This is for more of the back end thing. If you're working on forms that are huge, um, my favorite form had favorite. That's the wrong word. 14 pages. 14 printed pages of input. I mean like writing, handwriting inputs. 14 pages, they wanted to convert it to a single HTML page. Oh no, no, not separate HTML pages. I'm not, I'm not talking about like the wizard style where you can actually have separate HTML pages, but the back end had a limitation. You could only have a single HTML page per, per form. And in that case, we used this tool in order to extract all the fields so that someone who had intimate knowledge about these paper forms could see what default values we had input in, this, in, the, in the digital version of this 14 page form. And they could sit and compare the screen to the actual form more easily. This is like an underscore uh, implementation combined with a jQuery implementation for extracting and then filtering out forms, uh, sorry, form fields. It's also, I've used it for Phantom JS, uh, JS automated extraction, which is just a little bit too hard for sometimes. Um, in case you're doing a lot of form work and you want people to verify. Um, I'm going to skip through these. These are the questions. This is the questions page. Really a question of extension, as you mentioned, how to complete um, around the Elasticsearch user group. And um, there's always the question how do I make my searches better? And one strange suggestion is um, implement auto complete in your form fields because the best way to make users getting better queries is just to hint them on what's there, and auto complete usually raises the level of proper questions posed to your systems by percentages that you can never reach by. No, a better query language. Yeah, and you, you can take care of um, spelling mistakes as well. The spelling mistakes are useful. Straight away, yeah. And <coughs> that reduces a lot of frustration and everything. And yep. engines usually have the idea of, well, spelling mistakes, I iron them out by some way of fuzzy matching mm -hmm. in the search cluster and something. And all the people building solar and the mm -hmm. search, they're like, well, just also suggest the correct spelling. Yep. Yeah, and that improves stuff much more than clever ways of doing it in life. Yeah, and no, it, like solar fussy stuff is way better than anything I want to program. I mean, the stemming and everything, for sure. Um, so if you have a solar backend, please use it for autocomplete as well. And not just searching, but like prefetching suggestions for searches. All right.
as I said, already uploaded, taken care of. Um, <laughs> 